Good morning, my name is Greg Eisen. I'm with Eisen's Nursery and Vineyard. And this morning we're gonna be giving you an instructional video on how to prune muscadine vines. We're in a three acre block of our vineyard. So we're gonna go into in-depth pruning for the home gardeners and for commercial growers on exactly how we prune here at our farm. The first thing that we do is we'll come in here and we'll identify where we made the pruning cuts last year. So on this particular cordon here, this cut was made right here. You can tell by the shortness of the wood and also the color. So each year when we do our winter pruning, we want to leave one to two buds of the previous season's growth. So the cut was made here last winter. So this year we're going to come in and we're going to leave one to two additional buds of the previous season's growth. And we're going to do that on every single lateral. So there again, the pruning cut was made right here last winter and we're going to leave one to two additional buds of the previous season's growth. The reason we do that is we found that if you always prune back to the same exact spot each year, sometimes it promotes more vegetative vine growth and less actual fruiting wood. So we want to get as much production as we can and through our experience by leaving one to two buds of the previous season's growth, that seems to be giving us the best production year in and year out. So there again, we're just going to come in one to two buds and it's not a situation where we're trying to be exact. We know about where we want to leave the cuts. So I don't want you to spend a lot of time counting one bud and making the cut. Once you get the hang of what you're doing here, it'll make the process a lot sooner. So there again, the pruning cut was made right there last year. So we'll leave about one additional bud right there. Now, sometimes when you have a lot of vine growth, it's best just to come in here and just get enough of this wood cut out so you can see what you're doing and then you can come back in and make your finer cuts. All right, so now I have a little bit more room to work. So we'll come in here and whenever, and you can always identify the previous season's growth because of the light tan wood color where the older spurs or the older cuts will be a darker wood color like this darker brownish version where the previous season's growth is this light tan wood. So there again, we're just leaving one to two buds of the previous season's growth. Muscadine fruit is produced off new growth, so we have to severely prune them each winter. If we don't come in and prune them each winter, then your new growth, like on an example like this here, you take this lateral here, the new growth would come way out here. And from there is where the blooms would be produced and the fruit would be hanging way out here. And this is just not the desired way of having your vines bloom and set fruit. We want everything in here nice and tight because you'll get a lot more foliage for the laterals, which will promote larger fruit size, also allow the vine to ripen the fruit properly. This vine is going into its third growing season, so it's, this is the second time it's been winter pruned. So there again, this is a perfect example. This was a cut I just made. This is last year's spur that was cut, and we're just gonna leave one to two buds. This area right here by the trunk, three foot on either side, this is what we consider the crown of the plant. Now generally when a vine reaches the third, fourth, or fifth year, we'll start getting crowded with our cordons. As you can see here, where I pruned, we have a cordon here, a cordon here, a cordon here. We have about five or six cordons in about an eight inch space. Usually in year three is when we begin thinning out some of these cordons or spurts. Now the rule that I use is I want about a hand width between the fruiting spurs. So right here, obviously I have a lot more and I can't get my hand in there. So when we get to the point where we're really crowded with laterals, that's when we begin the thinning out process. Whenever I can, I always try to take out cordons that are on the underside of the main arm. So on this particular plant here, I want to have my hand width or about six inch spacing. The first one I'm going to take out is right here because it's on the underside of the arm. It's not in a very good place. And I'll make a clean cut there. So we've eliminated that one. So I still have five that are right here. So then I'm going to come in here and because this is crowded, I'm going to take this one out right here. And then I'm going to take this top one out right here. So even though I still have, I've got my hand with in there, I'm still a little crowded but I don't want to take off so many cordons that I'm going to really affect my fruit production. So by allowing the spacing right here, 
I'm comfortable with where I am for this season's production this upcoming year. So I'll probably have to come back in here next winter and thin out some additional spurs, but I don't want you to come in here and feel like you've got to take everything out, but I just would like for you to be able to try to squeeze your hand on any part of the main arm to allow better spacing. By allowing better spacing, it's going to do three things. First of all, it's going to prevent the plant from overproduction, putting on more fruit than the vine can ripen. It's going to allow for more airflow and sunlight, which in return leads to less disease. And also the quality of your fruit from a size and taste perspective will be much better. As you can see, once we get away from this crown area, you're usually not quite as crowded here. So I've got a little bit more than a hand width there, so I'm happy. Here I have a hand width, but I do have a little bit of crowding right here. So in this particular case here, I'm going to take out the underside. The reason I like to take out the underside versus the top, sometimes you get more vegetative vine growth if the, if the runners are growing straight down, where if they're on the top of the main arm, we always know they're going to be productive. In some situations where you're a little crowded like I still am, instead of taking out this whole fruiting spur here or this whole fruiting spur here, sometimes what we can do is take out sections of the fruiting spur. So if my hand here is the cordon or fruiting spur, instead of me cutting out the whole spur, I may just cut out parts of it to improve my spacing. So here, where every one of these little branches are has the potential to bear fruit. So this part of the spur here is pointing this way. So I know I may have some crossing this upcoming growing season. So instead of taking out this whole spur, what I may do is just take out this part of it. And here, I may just take out this part of it. And here, I may just take out this part of it. So by not eliminating the entire spur and just taking out sections, I've improved my spacing even that much better without over pruning the vine and hurting my upcoming season's fruit production. A lot of people are always, we get a lot of calls all the time when people prune that they see water dripping from these hard cuts and that's a natural process that's called bleeding. Now what bleeding is on a vine like this is throughout the winter months, whenever it rains, this vine is still absorbing water. The root system is absorbing water. So it's sort of like a cup or a glass of water. Once you fill the glass of water full, it can't, you can't put any more water in it. So these plants are the same way. So when we make these hard pruning cuts, all of a sudden all the excess water that's been in this plant has a way of exiting the plant from these hard pruning cuts. We've seen vines bleed more than five gallons of water and we've never seen it have any negative effect on the vine as far as from a death standpoint or a production issue the next year. So if you see any bleeding or these laterals where we make these cuts begin dripping water, that's a perfectly natural process. Thank you very much.